Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to get started with installing all the necessary tools to work with React Native CLI. Before we begin, it's important to note that installation process may change over time as React Native releases newer versions. Therefore, it's always best to refer to the official documentation for most up-to-date instructions. If this video differs from the documentation, always follow the documentation as your primary resource. I'm going to place a link to the documentation with this video. Today, we're going to be focusing on setting up the CLI environment for macOS. It is recommended to have around 10 gigabytes of free space and the latest macOS version for smooth installation. While I believe this video will guide you through the process without any issues, it's worth mentioning that everyone's computer usage can be different. If you have prior development experience or have already installed some tools for Expo, for example, there might be some clashes. But don't worry, if you encounter any issues, you can always ask your questions in the Q&A section below. Now, let's jump right into the documentation and find out how to get macOS ready for iOS development. So first things first, as I mentioned, we're going to go to the React Native documentation. So I'm going to Google React Native. I'm going to follow the first link. And then I'm going to go to development and I need some guide on how to go with the installation process. I'm going to set up my environment and I'm going to click on this link. And here we see two tabs. One is for Expo and one is for React Native CLI. And we want to go with React Native CLI. So I'm just going to click on this link. And I'm going to make sure that my development OS has Mac OS selected and that my target OS for which we're going to be creating application in the first place is going to be iOS. Now here we see that we are going to need to install all these tools, Node, Watchman, React Native, Command Line Interface, Xcode, and CocoaPod. And we are going to do this together. So let's get started with that. For this, we're going to need a terminal. And if you've never used a terminal on your macOS, just click on command space and then type in terminal and just click on the first software that is available in that search. I'm going to place my terminal right here and I'm going to move this terminal into my other software applications here so that it's always accessible because we're going to be needing it a lot for React Native. Great, so the first thing that I want to try to install with this terminal is Homebrew. We're going to be using Homebrew to install a bunch of other things that we need for React Native CLI. I'm going to just tell you how to install this first. And while this is running, I do want to get into what Homebrew is exactly. So let's just copy this and paste it in our terminal and click on enter. And then just enter your password here. It is going to be actually getting the input that you're giving to the terminal. It's just not going to show you as something that you actually typed. So don't worry if you see nothing next to your password, just enter your password and hit on enter. Great, now it started the installation, but I need to click on enter to continue. So I'm going to do that. And meanwhile, I'm going to tell you a bit about Homebrew. So, Homebrew is a package manager for macOS that allows you to easily install and manage various software packages. It simplifies the process of installing tools like Node, Watchman, and other dependencies required for React Native CLI. With Homebrew, you can conveniently keep your development environment up to date, and that is why we're installing this in the first place. So once this is installed, you can come back to this video and continue watching it so that we get into installing the other tools that we need for React Native CLI iOS development. Great, now that our Homebrew has been installed, there's a couple of next steps that our terminal tells us to take. So let's just copy this and 
run these two commands in our terminal to add homebrew to our path. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it here, and done. Now, if we want to check that homebrew has been installed, we can just type in brew version, and I see that homebrew is installed. Great. So I'm just going to clear my terminal to show everything much more clearly to you guys. And now we're going to start with installing node. So let's just run brew install node as mentioned right here. I'm just going to click on enter and I do want to get into what exactly is node. So node is a JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's JavaScript engine. It allows you to execute JavaScript code outside of a web browser, making it essential for running React Native CLI. Node provides the necessary environment to build, test, and run your React Native applications. So that is why we need to install it. Great. Now that Node is installed, we're going to start installing Watchman. So let's just copy this as well and paste it in our terminal. And I am going to tell you a bit about Watchman as well. Watchman is a tool developed by Facebook, now known as Meta, that watches files and triggers actions when they change. In React Native development, Watchman plays a crucial role in monitoring file changes and efficiently updating the app during development. It significantly speeds up the development process by automating repetitive tasks. It tracks what changes you make to your application while you have your simulators up and running and makes sure that it updates your simulator as you're making changes to the files and the code without the actual need to rebuild the whole project to see your changes appear in the simulator. So. Watchman significantly will improve the time you need for development. Now let's wait for this to finish up and you can come back to the video. Great. So it actually finished up right now. So we are going to get into installing the Xcode. Xcode is Apple's integrated development environment or IDE for macOS. It provides a comprehensive set of tools, including a code editor, debugger, and simulator necessary for iOS app development. To run and test iOS applications created with React Native, we need to have Xcode installed on our system. So to do that, what we're going to need to do is go to the App Store, make sure you're logged in, and then just search for Xcode. And if you do have the latest Mac OS, you should have no problem downloading Xcode. Otherwise, you might be asked to first update your system and then download Xcode. And I totally recommend that you do that. Otherwise, you might face other issues if you're not totally up to date. But if you do have the latest system already, as I do, you can just click here and start downloading Xcode. Now, Xcode right now is around eight gigabytes. Right here, I see that it's about eight gigabytes. So it's going to take some time to install. I would say approximately 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the speed of your internet and your computer. So just wait for a couple of minutes and come back to the video once your Xcode installation has been completed. And then let's continue on together. Great, now that our Xcode has been installed, we're ready to open it up and finish up all the installation processes that might come with opening it for the first time. So let's just click on open. I am going to close down this app store because we don't need it anymore. Let's just agree to the terms and conditions that comes with the use of Xcode. And here we can just have macOS and iOS selected. We don't really need watchOS or tvOS, so I'm not going to check those. You can check those if you want to create any applications later connected to watchOS and tvOS. So let's click on install. Some additional components are going to install. This is going to take just a minute. 
And after that, all we got to do is verify that our command line tools is installed and selected in the locations panel. Great. So let's click on continue now and let's go to this bar and click on Xcode. And here you're going to see their settings or preferences. So just click on that and you will see locations tab right here. Let's click on that. And here you're going to see command line tools and it's going to seem like the Xcode command line tools is selected, but please pay careful attention because it says here that no Xcode is selected and we do need this selected. So just open it up. You're probably just going to see one option, but make sure to click on it. And then you're gonna have to enter your password and then you should see this warning go away and you're gonna have this path to your Xcode app. So this is all we needed to do actually with Xcode. So we can just go out of there. And the last thing that we're going to need to do is make sure we have Cocoa Pods installed. And these Cocoa Pods are actually something that depends on Ruby. So there are two ways of installing it, depending on what version of Ruby you have. You might go with either or. Right now, I am running on the version 2.6.10. And if you have anything less than 2.7, then I recommend that you install Cocoa Pods using the brew command. Otherwise, you can just go and click on this Cocoa Pods link right here and just install it with the jam command. So let's just install Cocoa Pods right now using the brew command because you can do that as well. So let's just do brew install Cocoa Pods. So this will get the version of Ruby that you need and you will get everything ready for you to use Cocoa Pods. And I do want to explain a bit what Cocoa Pods actually is. This is installing, so let's talk about that. Cocoa Pods is a dependency manager for Swift and Objective-C projects. Objective-C and Swift are used when developing native applications not something that is connected to React Native, but if you were writing applications only using the Xcode for iOS applications only, you would use Swift or Objective-C. CocoaPods is a dependency manager for Swift or Objective-C that is used when creating iOS applications only using Xcode. So in React Native development, CocoaPods is used to integrate third-party libraries and dependencies into your iOS applications. If you do not know what dependencies and third-party libraries are, you will get to know to it during this course, so no worries. But just to give you an idea, it simplifies the process of adding, updating, and managing these dependencies created by other people and developers that you can use for your applications, saving you time and effort to create various features. Now, our Cocoa Pods has been installed. So what we got to do right now to ensure that everything went smoothly with our React Native CLI is to actually try to create a new project. So let's do that. I'm going to clear my terminal and I'm going to change my directory and go to desktop. And here I'm going to run MPX React Native init, which stands for initialize and then awesome project. I'm going to click on enter and it's going to ask me for access to my desktop folder. Sure, I'm going to give it the access. Now we're going to be using the latest React Native version so far. And I'm going to say yes, it's okay to proceed. And now some node modules are going to be set up. Your project folder is going to be created with all the node modules inside there. And then what you're going to see is the React logo appear in your terminal. And we're going to start downloading the initial template for our application. This template that we're going to be downloading right now is something that we can run for both Android and iOS. But since we're only setting up the development environment for iOS right now, we're just going to download this template and run it to make sure that all of our setup 
is correct and everything's working as expected. So wait for this process to complete and come back to the video once you're ready. Great, so you're going to see in the terminal this kind of view once your project has been set up. I see right here on my desktop that awesome project was created and inside here I can see all the files that were created for it but we're not going to be opening up anything from here yet until we start the development process. So let's just close this up again. And then what do we want to do to just run this application and make sure that it is working as expected is to follow the instructions for iOS. Here you see two commands that are separated by this end sign here. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is changing the directory to make sure that we're in the awesome project directory. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm actually going to copy the whole thing. And the second part of this command is just used for running our application specifically for iOS. So anytime you want to run the application that you've created, you are going to use the second half of this, but we are going to practice this in the upcoming videos anyways. So let's just paste this command right here and click on enter. And what's going to happen right now is that our awesome project is going to get built using Xcode. And then we're going to use iOS simulator that comes with Xcode. You're going to see this logo appear here, which is the same of Xcode, but it also has the simulator right here. And I'm going to just click on OK, and it's going to open up the default simulator set on Xcode, which is iPhone SE right now. And it's going to first power up. And once it is started completely, our application is going to get built and installed on the simulator, and it will automatically open up. And we're going to see how initial template of React Native application looks like on iOS simulator. So let's wait for just a couple of minutes. Right before your application is going to launch, you're going to see this new terminal pop up, which is called the Metro terminal or Metro bundler. And this is going to be needing any time you are trying to make changes to your application. If you close down the Metro Bundler, your watchman is not going to be taking a look at your files. And basically, your simulator is going to stop communicating with your file system that you might be changing. So anytime you are developing and you're actually trying to change things in your application, please make sure that Metro Bundler is open and it's not closed down. And then if you want to stop the development for the day. You can always close down your Metro Bundler and just open it up again once you run the commands to open your application. So great, our Metro Bundler is now running. You see how React Native Applications template looks like on iOS Simulator. So we have successfully completed all the steps. We have installed the latest React Native environment setup. And because we did everything successfully, you're able to see this running in the simulator. Now, I do want to say that if you have any questions or run into any issues during the installation process, don't hesitate to ask the question in the Q&A section because we have received some questions already in Q&A section because of which I decided to actually update this video. And I'm here to help you succeed. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. You can message me or you can ask your question in the Q&A section and all the other students will be able to use the information as well. So thank you for watching and let's continue our React Native journey.